what we have here in front of us is a new input lag testing device. This device is made by a man named Leo Bodner. He has a website that sells various electronic gadgets and this is one of his newest ones. It's been available for a week or two now. It costs 70 pounds excluding delivery. Now the device weighs about 100 grams. It's got a battery compartment there for two AA batteries. That's how it's powered. I'll read you the instructions that come with it. It's also packaged in a little anesthetic bag. And that's obviously put inside the um, post pack or whatever it's sent in. So the operating instructions. Plug HDMI lead connected to TV into the lag test device. There's the HDMI connector there. HDMI to DVI cable may also be used. Push the button and wait for a moment for the test screen to appear. There's the button there. Place photo sensor over one of the three displayed reference marks. And the photo sensor is in there where that hole is. Read measurement result from the screen. So on Leo's website, it says that it measures combined input lag and pixel response time. And it works with LCD, LED, OLED TVs and projectors. It doesn't mention anything about CRT or plasma. However, there is a website, AV Forums, who do reviews on hi-fi gear and TVs included. And they've had their hands on this device for quite a few months now. And they've tested many plasma tele televisions with it. So I don't think you'll have any issue testing lag with plasmas with this. Now this one here that I've bought, it outputs 1080p at a 60Hz refresh rate. That's all it does. Subsequent to my purchase, I see there is an option on Leo's website to buy a version that outputs 720p rather than 1080p. A few gamers must have asked Leo to give them a 720p version to test the lag of televisions for using Xbox 360 and PS3 as the majority of the games play in 720p, so I can understand why they do that. Although, Leo says on his website that through their own basic testing that the lag does not appear to change regardless of the output resolution. So there's something to bear in mind anyway. So I've got the 1080p version now, and I should have the 720p version in a week or two to make some comparisons with. Anyhow, I'll go and hook it up to a TV now and we'll see how it actually goes. The TV in front of us is the 2012 Panasonic Plasma. It's the 50STA. I make sure that I mention the A on the end because this is the Australian model and the findings on this may not be applicable to any other models but probably will be quite similar if not the same. So the device is plugged in and it's ready to go. It's in HDMI socket 1. So here it is. Now what you do is you, you push the button and hold it, hold it firmly, and then the test begins. Now all you need to do now is move the sensor over any of one of these three flashing bars, and there you go. It's pretty steady, it's on 40, 43.2 milliseconds on the middle bar. Let's go to the bottom bar. Again. Exactly the same, 43.2, and then to the top bar, 43.2. It's off now. Hold the button on again. Let's see, let's see how consistent it is. You see the TV is receiving 1080p at 60 hertz, 43.2. It finds it very quickly. It's going up a little bit. No, no, it's settling down back to just fluctuating a little bit. And then to the top, 43.2, so it's very consistent and it's quite quick to ascertain the value at the given time. The test results that you just saw then were a result of the TV being switched into game mode, which is the optimum setting for low input lag. I'm going to perform the test now with game mode switched off. I also want to point out on the Panasonic here, that when you cycle through the different presets, you'll notice that they change immediately. But when it is turned on to game mode, it actually blanks out for a split second. 
which to me indicates that when the TV is turned into game mode, it does go into a different mode unlike all the others. Anyhow, it's in normal mode now. The lag has increased to 60.9. It goes to show you that game mode does make a difference, at least on this plasma here. Let's do one more change. Let's go to advanced settings and turn intelligent frame creation to maximum. That's turned on. Let's see what this does to the lag now. jumps up again to 95.7, 94.2, another big jump again, so definite, definite changes there and the device picks up on it. I can personally tell that I can feel the difference when playing games when game mode is turned off. I'm not going to go any further right now with testing, I'm going to wait a couple of weeks until I get the 720p version and then I'll try some LCD screens and some more plasma screens, compile it all together and put another video up on the YouTube. I think this device has got a lot of potential. Its portability is excellent and the pace with which you can use it is, is great. So I reckon once a few more people end up with these devices, we'll probably see a collection of data concerning different screens and how they perform. So it's going to be quite helpful to people looking for a new screen to buy. I must say I'd like to see a couple of additions to it. I'd like it to be able to have selection between different resolutions 1080p, 720p, 480p as many as we can get would be great and the other thing that I would also like to see is component video output. I'd love to be able to test devices for their lag through the component system of the television and add to that, VGA would be pretty good too. So, I can't completely give an in-depth review of this device just yet, but it is looking quite promising, so stay tuned until I um, explore into it a bit more. Thanks for watching.